a little bit closer to this promise of dignity and self-determination and inclusion for all individuals. And it did so by drawing inspiration, not so much from Europe and North America, but from other sites in the global south, yes. right? It drew from Nepal, Fiji, South Africa, all of whom have really progressive laws on the books protecting sexual minorities and those who are gender non-conforming. So the 2009 decision showed that the global south can be the leader in fighting for true sexual and gender justice globally. And this is what makes the Supreme Court decision that just came down so incredibly disappointing, right? But it also makes clear that change happens not in a steady forward motion, right? It goes back and forth, there are always setbacks, and we cannot take any victory for granted. And so the beauty of this horrible decision that just came down, if there is any beauty in it, is that it's actually repoliticized and regalvanized us. And, it made, and it's made the bonds of those of us in the diaspora and those of us on the subcontinent that, who are all fighting for social justice that much stronger. The fact that this is happening in 50 cities is unbelievable, right? And so it's actions like this that actually make change happen. So thank you all for being here. Thank you, Gayatri. We have an amazing list of leaders, both members of organizations that are endorsing, as well as just uh, leaders in New York um, and globally. Um, so next up, we're going to have Asim Chabra, who's a journalist, come speak. So this is what gives me a lot of comfort. This guy is standing right here. I won't go into it, but I love Alok. He's, this guy is the future of the whole South Asian queer boom. Seriously, Alok, I'm really, I'm very proud of you, buddy. Uh, I won't go into details, but uh, my name is Asim Chabra. I'm a journalist. I've been living for in New York for many, many years. Um, I don't have anything prepared, really. I don't give political speeches. I essentially write. But uh, yes, I'm angry. I mean, we are all very angry. I'm smiling, but I, I, I you know, yes, media. I, I am very angry. Uh, just look at what has happened in India since 2009, after the Delhi High Court uh, legalized, decriminalized, basically. Me? Okay. Um, uh, same sex relationships basically and, and struck down Article 377. If you look at across India, there's so many cities now where there are queer pride parades right. in Delhi, in Bangalore, and I think Mumbai also has one in, in Chandigarh, you know, uh, Kolkata. It is remarkable how many, although there's much smaller parades as compared to what we see in New York City and other places in this, in this country, but it's remarkable, even if it's 2,000, 3,000 people will come out and, and many of them are not wearing masks anymore because they're not embarrassed about the fact that they are gay and lesbian and they're coming out and they want to say they're proud of who they are. And then look what the Supreme Court does, basically says you guys are all criminals. This is what makes me very angry. This is what, what makes me really angry is if you look at India, a large part of India, a substantial part of India lives in smaller towns and villages where there are young kids, teenagers who are struggling and grappling and trying to understand why are they different.